Rivers, they're pretty important for both people and wildlife. For people, they provide critical supplies of water for drinking, agriculture, industry and recreation. And for wildlife, they're an important habitat for a huge proportion of biodiversity. Today, we're at the River Eyre in Leeds. As you can see, the river has been heavily modified by humans. But is this the case for the majority of rivers in the UK? And what effect has it had on biodiversity? Let's find out. Firstly, because we're conservation biologists, we'll be approaching the issues surrounding rivers from a purely ecological point of view, which in itself is tricky. So we'll be providing a brief overview. UK rivers were in a pretty good state until the Industrial Revolution came around, peaking in the 19th century. The River Air, like many rivers in the UK, took heavy damage. By 1825, it was part of what was termed a waterborne sewage system, basically a sewer carrying waste from the surrounding settlements. The waste was joined by pollution from industry to create a toxic brew, killing off most biodiversity in the river. The problems in the River Air were mirrored across the UK, with devastating effects on river biodiversity. For example, otters were practically wiped out by the 1970s, poisoned by pesticide runoff from agriculture, chemicals which also killed off their food supply. There's also been channelization, the process of straightening rivers and regrading their banks, coupled with human land use and re-sculpting of floodplains and the loss of bankside vegetation. All of these factors have had a complex range of impacts on river biodiversity. But what about rivers today? What state are they in? Well, obviously there's no longer Victorian sewers, and great strides have been made to clean up the pollution and restore biodiversity. This restoration doesn't just include rivers in the countryside, those flowing through cities have vastly improved too. A great example is the River Thames in London. It was once polluted by vast quantities of sewage and pollution. It was almost devoid of life until as recently as the 1950s. But the introduction of pollution control has meant there are now over a hundred species of fish present. The Thames even won the International Thies River Prize in 2010 recognising its environmental improvements. However, in the UK as a whole, there's still room for improvement, as we can see from the River Air. In 2015, the Environment Agency released figures about UK rivers. They classified them on a scale of high quality to poor. A bit arbitrary perhaps, but good for gauging an overall trend. Figures showed that 17% of rivers in the UK are classified as being in good condition. This was judged on water chemistry, water flow and wildlife. Around 62% were classified as moderate and 17% as poor. So we provided you with a very brief overview of a very complex subject. But what does the future hold for UK rivers? Are there any solutions to the current problems? We'll address these questions in future episodes. In the meantime, let us know if there are any rivers where you live and if they're in a bad state or they're a shining example of biodiversity. Catch you later.